Good day, and welcome to the latest video that we have on the Oz Optics DSTS system for measuring distributed changes in strain and temperature along an optical fiber. In a previous video, we demonstrated the range and capabilities of our BOTDA system, Breon Optical Time Domain Analysis System. Today we're going to do a similar video, only this time on our BOTDR system, Breon Optical Time Domain Reflectometry. The difference between the two instruments is that the BOTDA system has a second laser which acts as a pump laser to amplify the signal we're measuring, thus extending its range. Using that instrument, we were able to demonstrate measurements over a fiber exceeding 100 kilometers in length. While the BOTDR system cannot match the BOTDA system in terms of range, it's quite good on its own. So today we're going to demonstrate the BOTDR system measuring a change in temperature along a 50 kilometer length of fiber. Let's walk you through the setup. So here is our setup for our experiment. We have over on our left side here the uh, BOTDA system. It's connected up to a 25 kilometer spool of fiber. That in turn is connected to a 70 meter long spool of fiber, which we put inside this insulating container here. The fiber then comes out to another 25 kilometer length of fiber, which is in turn connected to a second 70 meter long spool of fiber, which is also inside our insulated box. And finally, the output from that 70 meters of fiber is connected to a one kilometer spool of fiber. We'll be making our measurements on the two sections of 70 meter long fiber. One at the 25 kilometer point and one at the 50 kilometer point. We will first take a baseline measurement in room temperature and then we will immerse both spools of fiber inside ice water which will lower the temperature down to zero degrees. We will then use the BOTDA system to measure the change in temperature and show how it can detect the changes on both, the, both spools of fiber at the 25 kilometer mark and the 50 kilometer mark. Alright, so before we can begin any measurements, we first have to set up the BOTDR unit and set the parameters and take a baseline reading. So, to begin, we click on the BOTDR button and this brings us to our configuration menu. We've set up the instrument to be using channel 2 on our instrument. The fiber length is 50 kilometers, so we put in 55 kilometers, 55,000 meters as our fiber length, so it will record the entire length of the system plus a little bit of extra. Because of the length we're doing, 50 kilometers, we're going with a pulse width of 250 nanoseconds. This is the recommended pulse width for dealing with fibers this long. And it means that our resolution of our instrument is 25 meters. So we're able to detect changes in strain or temperature over a section of fiber 25 meters long, anywhere along the 50 kilometers of fiber. We're using a spatial step size of only 5 meters. So it's finer than the resolution of our pulse width and that will allow us to get a decent shape of the profiles and you'll be able to see how the pulse width causes a slope at the beginning and end of the effective temperature. Because it is such a long length of fiber, we're doing quite a, long, quite a lot of averaging here. We set up the averages at 35,000 averages. Okay? The maximum setting we have is just over 65,000 averages. So we're going about half of the maximum, maximum limit here. We could do it for a full 65,000 and that will give us a slightly better reading than what we're taking here. 
What this will do for our experiment, and it will allow us to take readings about once every 15 minutes. And the fiber, of course, is standard Corning SMF28 fiber. So to verify that our instrument is working properly, we're going to take a single wavelength scan from the laser. So this will take uh, a few seconds for it to take a measurement, just a single frequency, and it will bring up on our screen our plot of the reflected intensity versus distance along the fiber. And here's our image. And you can see we have the characteristic curve where we have a very strong signal at the beginning of the fiber and it gradually gets weaker and weaker and weaker. At the halfway point, we have the transition from one fiber to the next. And then it completely continues to get weaker until we get near to the end where we have quite a small signal. What this means is that at the beginning and in the middle of the fiber, we have a strong enough signal to get a quite accurate reading of temperature and uh, temperature and strain changes. The Breon signal is strong enough so we can get an accurate measurement of the Breon spectrum. When we get out near the end, the signal is very weak compared to the background noise, so you're going to start seeing some noise appear in our signal which is going to affect the accuracy of our measurements of temperature or strain up at the up, upper limit. And you'll see that as we're, as we're continuing to take the measurement. So, once we're happy that we're getting a signal along the entire length of the device, we can then go and select, uh, stop our laser, and select measurement. And the first thing we're going to do is take a baseline measurement. Okay, so we're going to take a brand new baseline measurement and save it for our setup. So, we hit scan and start creating our baseline. And the overall process is going to take about 15 minutes. So we're 95% of the way through right now. So it'll take about another 30 seconds for it to complete getting the data and then I'll have to start the anal analysis and then it will do the analysis of the baseline. And it's almost finishing gathering all the data. It's 97% of the way done. Now it's 99% of the way done. It only has one more scan to do, and then I'll have all the data, and I'll start the analysis. Now it's analyzing the data, finally. It only takes it about half a minute for it to get the analysis done. And once it's completed, it will display for us the complete baseline measurement. And you can see quite clearly in the middle the transition from one fiber to the other. And if we zoom in on that feature, you have a pretty abrupt transition from one fiber to the next. And if we zoom out, Down at the end here, we have the transition from the end of the fiber to a short section of the fiber and then the last kilometer of fiber that we put on at the very end. So this makes our baseline reading. So once we're happy with, that, with our baseline reading, we can save it. And we'll save all the forms of data for our experiment here. All right, we'll save that baseline reading.
And now that we have our baseline reading, we can now demonstrate the system measuring a change in the temperature. And we're going to show you how we're going to induce that temperature in our next portion. So, inside you can see our two spools of fiber. And we also have a thermal couple out here that's recording the temperature at the spool. As you can see right now, the room temperature is being recorded as 21.6 degrees. So that's the temperature inside our insulated box. So we'll now pour in our pitcher of ice water. Immerse the fiber in the ice. And as you can see, the temperature is now a nice cool 0 0.3 degrees inside. So having established a nice cold temperature for the box, we will close it up so it'll stay cool. And we'll continue with our measurement. And now with the ice water covering our pieces of fiber, let's start our temperature measurement. So we click on strain temperature. We make sure it's showing relative temperature. And we hit the start button to take our reading. And again, this will take about the same amount of time as our baseline reading, around about 15 to 20 minutes to take the result. And we're just about finished taking our temperature measurement. We're at the 97% mark, so it should take it only a minute more for it to complete the measurements. 99% mark, so it's just getting that last bit of data. And once it's reported this last scan, it'll do the data analysis and we'll be able to see the results. It's finished the data gathering. It's now making the analysis. And here's our scan of the temperature. And if you look carefully, you'll see two sharp dips, one in the middle and one at the very end. Let's zoom in on the middle dip here at the 25 kilometer mark. So, zooming in in this section, you can clearly see the drop in the temperature. From an initial reading on this side, of reading 1.5 degrees, uh, uh, of reading currently 1.5 degrees change in temperature, to the bottom here, where it's measuring minus 21.5. So the overall change according to the system here is roughly 23 degrees Celsius, which is pretty close to what our measurement reading was with the thermal couple, where we saw a temperature change of roughly 21 degrees Celsius. You can also show the distance here. If I click on the middle point here and compare the, the uh, length reading here is 25086. Whereas on the other side, equal distance, 25163. So the difference there is a little bit under 80 meters. To be exact, it's 77 meters. Okay? Now you can see how we're limited by the pulse width. If I compare the this point here, which is 25076 with this point down here, which is 25101, that's 25 meters. So this is the effect of the resolution when we go from this point here to this point here. The transition is 25 meters for it to get from one to the room temperature down to the ice temperature of the water. So that shows the resolution that's limited by our pulse width. And the instrument does the same thing on the other side. 
here it's reading 25178. If I measure down here, it's 21147. So again, about 28 meters here, which is comparable to the resolution limited by our pulse width. Okay, but we clearly get the data points in between this range showing you that change in temperature. Note right now how flat and level this initial curve is. Okay, the changes that we're seeing here peak from about a plus 1.3 degrees down to about half a degree. Okay, so there's about a little bit over one degree variation in our temperature reading here. That's because we have a quite a strong signal at the 25 kilometer mark. Now comparison, for comparison, let's look at the last readings over here, the final 50, at the 50 kilometer mark where we have this pulse. Now you can see the signal is quite a bit noisier. Okay? Our peak to peak variations here are going from an upper range of about 4.8 degrees down to a lower range of minus 6 degrees. So there's about a 10 degree peak to peak variation here in the average temperature. Now for comparison, in the middle here, the middle reading is roughly 22.89 degrees and it's peaking from uh, a 19 degree drop in temperature down to a low of almost 25 degree drop in temperature. Okay, so this is the peak to peak variation in the temperature reading at the end here. It's roughly plus or minus 3 degrees. So a significantly noisier signal than what we had in the middle of the range. But still, strong enough in order to actually detect that change in temperature as we went from one transition to the other. And if we're looking at the average temperature change over this range, it's consistent with our reading halfway in between, in the middle of our system. To explain why we see this, Let's take a look at the Breon spectrum itself. We'll zoom out. And let's bring up the uh, multi-view, which allows us to see several different aspects of it, including our spectrum. If we go into the middle, of the system, you can see how we get a very strong spectrum here. The peak is hitting around about seven units compared to our background signal. On the other end, at the 50 kilometer mark, we have a much weaker signal here. It's really down to slightly under one unit signal strength. And comparing that with the background noise in the signal, you can see significant variation. So this is what's affecting the accuracy of our measurement right now. There are several ways to improve this. The most, well, the key way to improve this is to increase the time taken to average the system. If we had extended our measurements to 65,000 uh, measurements averaging, then we would have improved our signal to noise ratio by a factor of 40%. And that in turn, would improve the accuracy of our measurements at the very end of the fiber. But our demonstration here shows quite clearly how we can actually detect changes and measure the changes in temperature at a distance as far out as 50 kilometers. I hope you appreciate and enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please contact Oz Optics and we'll be happy to show you, tell you more about our products.